Hi right, y'all, it's AGP here and it's Wednesday. So you know it's time for another AGP video. All right, y'all, so this past week, we got some new articles on Ghost of Tsushima. I was supposed to have some videos out before, but I didn't, so we're here now. So this week, we found out that the file size for Ghost of Tsushima is confirmed. It will be clocking in at 50 gigabytes, so it is a decent-sized game. If you don't have that kind of space on your PlayStation 4 right now and you plan on getting this game, you might want to beat whatever games you have that you're playing and erase that now so you can create some space for Ghost of Tsushima. Also remember, this is without any updates or any DLC. This is just 50 gigs on launch. This past week, Sucker Punch's creative director, Nate Fox, who was, was speaking a lot during the 18-minute gameplay, had an interview with Brazilian website Voxel, and they were asking certain questions about the 18-minute gameplay and trying to get us some more answers as far as how long it will take to complete the game and how big the world is and what you'll be able to do in the world. Now, the question that they asked during the interview was, can it take up to 30, 40, or 50 hours to complete the game 100%? and obviously less if you just stay on the main story. His direct quote was, yes, absolutely. However, I would highly recommend that everyone get off the main route and get lost on Tsushima Island. Now y'all saw how beautiful the world is and how you'll be able to traverse it. As if you guys know, you've, if you've played Assassin's Creed, it does look a lot like that. So traversing the world does look like a whole lot of fun. So I would recommend that people explore the world anyways. It's an open world game. You know, that's, that's what we want them for. That's what we play them for. The next question they asked in their interview was whether or not the world was kind of empty because in the 18 minute gameplay we didn't see a whole lot of npcs we didn't see a whole lot of mongols except for in the camps and the one guy when you were about to go to the shrine and you saw the one person getting attacked by by a bear that was yeah it was kind of wild they were asking about that because some people seem to be concerned that they felt the world might be a little bit empty in reference to the 18 minute gameplay that they saw and nate fox clarified that that will not be the case. The world will not be empty. His direct quote was, what you saw in the presentation was some side action in the game. It was not part of one's particular story. The map has Mongolians everywhere, and the main part will be Jin's transformation from being a samurai to over time becoming the ghost. The map we showed during the state of play was very zoomed in. That was just a little portion of the starting area. The actual map is huge. He also goes on to say, Tsushima Island covers the biomes you can find on mainland Japan, from snowy mountains to bamboo forests to waterfalls and rolling grasslands. We want to give enough stuff to keep it electrifying for the player. We didn't want to make a huge map and have nothing on it. So it's packed with people, items, and stories to explore. I guess people can argue that they want a little bit more info than that, in a way, because he talked a lot about the environment in his response to that question, which we know will be pretty interactive or will at least have a lot going on. But he did say that there will be a lot of items, NPCs, and stories to encounter. So look forward to that. I don't think the world will be bare or anything of that nature. I think Sucker Punch, I can trust them. They've never had a bare world before in their old games, so I don't think they would start now. It is a little harder because it is the biggest game that they've had, period. They, they clarified that. But Infamous, all the Infamous games were good and didn't seem bare and like there was nothing to do. The world was populated and you could always do kind of, you know, whatever you wanted. Now, what we found out about two or three days ago is that not only do they recommend that you should traverse the whole world and delve in and be interactive in the world of Ghost of Tsushima, but that in a lot of ways, you kind of have to. And the reason why is because you will not unlock the full array of weapons and abilities if you do not. Nate Fox, in a separate interview conducted by Press Start Australia, was asked about that and his quote was, If you go on Jin's journey from samurai to ghost, you'll get access to some abilities and some weapons. But if you really want the full diversity of possibilities, you have to explore. You have to meet side characters. You have to go places that you're not really even told exist. So, even if you want to make being a ghost easier, remember, there are two different skill trees. One for being a ghost one for being a samurai like I explained in my is Ghost of Tsushima the Assassin's Creed game we never got video is that there will be two different skill trees one for each and they clarified just then that you do need to explore if you want to find the full array of weapons that you can use as the ghost or the full array of weapons that you can use as a samurai or abilities for either so that's pretty cool it's nice to have that it's a lot like Sekiro where if you guys played that you know you had to go and find tools like they didn't just give you everything now Nate Fox was also asked if players will end up missing things if they don't explore every nook and corner. To which Fox replied, absolutely. 
One of the big challenges of making a game like this where we're looking to capture that wandering samurai experience is being okay with the fact that not all of the things that we make, whether it be missions or abilities, are going to be seen by every player. That is the nature of giving people freedom. That seems to be kind of a common thing. Now we've heard that in Last of Us Part 2 as well and in inside the gameplay and that's not even a fully open world game, although it will be a lot more open world than the last one, although the last one had some open world aspects for sure. So it seems to be a thing. So if there's some things that you will miss during your playthrough obviously if you play it more than once or you explore more you will unlock more abilities and weapons and stories and side missions because you know you do gain allies and i'm sure the stories that you sink yourself into will be different allies that can help you later on and they could probably help craft things for you or give you things make whatever they can for you if you are cool with your allies and you work together with them so that is pretty dope the last thing i will say that is not the craziest of info for the game is that your horse stays alive i just thought y'all would like to know that because i liked to know that in red dead redemption 2 which inspired a lot for this game which they clarified also this past week is that your horse died like a lot like you had to switch your horse a few times i mean i didn't let my horse die but you know i did get into some some shenanigans and sometimes the horse would would croak and that was not cool so i'm glad that that is not a thing they said that it will briefly run away but it will never die so that is nice so yeah that is what we got for ghost of shima in this past week but i'm gonna catch y'all next time i right? don't forget to like comment and subscribe Peace.